Hey, I'm Kev Care, Mr. Cohn. Welcome to MotoGP 15 Career Mode, where we are taking elusive racing from Moto3 Obscurity to MotoGP Glory, hopefully in this series. But it may take a while if we have another round like we had in Austin last time out, where we were dreadful in qualifying. I mean, loads of mistakes, but we were progressing nicely in the race until we made a rash move late in the race. And as you can see, we ended up in 14th position. In the end, we don't need to make another move like that or get another result like that in Argentina. As before we go out to the circuit for qualifying, of course, we're nicking up bike development. And last time out in Austin, we had our first two data packs to the brakes and the chassis. I think I finally said that word right on the bike. So now they're level one components. So where are we going to add the data packs that we own from Austin to the bike here in Argentina? Well, I'm looking at the chassis and brake again. Has, I'm not going to be looking to develop the suspension or the engine just yet. I think I'll wait till around Mugello time to develop the engine where we need the extra horsepower, you know, down those long straights and those, those fantastic, you no know, fast bends that that Italian circuit has. But I think here in Argentina, I'm going to develop the brakes. Has our philosophy of the bike at the moment is to make up all the time, you know, in the corners. So with better brakes, hopefully we're braking deeper and more efficiently into the corners. And hopefully you can make some moves, you know, in the race. As I won that pace, isn't quite there at the moment. As now we are on the Tomas de Rio Hondo circuit. Got redeveloped in 2000. And 11 into its current form, got added to the World Touring Car Championship calendar a few years ago, and then onto the Grand Prix motorcycle calendar as well. And it's a fantastic, challenging circuit I find to ride in these games. And it's got lots of heavy braking zones, like that first corner, get it down the second gear, clip that apex. You know, don't get on the power too early though. We got on it slightly early, but it didn't really cost us time as we get into the tighter second corner, left handed down to first gear, totally missed that apex. But it doesn't matter if you get on the power early, as after his right hand kink, which we totally missed the apex of, you got this massive back straight on the power for days on this Moto3 bike. Seems to go on forever. And then you got a very tricky braking zone at the end of this straight. It's so easy to miss that or lock up. You know, into this right hand, a very tight corner, get it down to first gear once again, and get on the power early once again as well as you've got a flat out left hand kink and then we're preparing ourselves for perhaps the trickiest corner on this circuit as it's such an easy corner to mess up it doesn't look like much this right hander but it's taken in second gear and you've got to be careful the brake and as we're demonstrating our qualifying that we're entering for days into the runoff zone and you've got to be precise with the turn in as well as if you're slightly late again you're running wide towards that runoff zone and just losing time as you've got to delay yourself getting onto the power heading towards this left hand bend which is a bit easier you know braking's a bit tricky but it's got nice camber that means you can take the apex of that corner most of the time and then heading into the final set so we've got a virtual flat out left hand kink and then another tricky braking zone this right hand at the end of that so tricky at times you know you got to take the wide line in this game normally i've taken the shower line in previous games but i thought i'd take the ride line here clip the apex late but most importantly get on the power early for that flat out left hand kink use all of the curb on the right hand side and get a great one down the start finish straight and then do a 52 flat in qualifying yeah well one that piece just isn't quite there at the moment has it looked like a decent lap as you saw you know not many mistakes but yeah just the pace not quite there yet in qualifying as Danny Kent did a 50 point free to grab pole on his Honda head of Navarro great that from him and then the Niviera and then on the second row it's Quartarado, Vinales and Antonelli and then on the third row Vasquez, Hanukkah and Masbu rounding out the top 10 is Bastianini ahead of Binder McPhee and then on the fifth row it's Ocatelli, Bagnana the top Mahindra rider ahead of his fellow Italian Mahindra buddy Ferrari and then we split Fenati and Loy on the sixth row not where we want to be not, not a great qualifying for us, you know, in qualifying and in the races at the moment, we're ending for top 10, you know, finishes. And we were way short of that in qualifying. As unfortunately, our home favourite, Gabriel Rodrigo, rounds out the field 4.4 seconds back of Danny Kent on his KTM. As now we're on the grid for the sixth lap race, or a bit longer, round here in Argentina. As we start from 17th out of 34 riders, we are away. We're exactly halfway in this 
midfield as we approach the first corner looking to the inside as hopefully we can make some moves here and we're down the inside of a couple of riders we're up into the points already and we're bashing elbows already with our ability that's Bastinini that's unfortunately carried in it's down on oh, the KTM rider a disappointing start to his race as we're fighting with another KTM rider I believe that is Brad Binder we are fighting with yes it is as we're alongside Bastianini we made a legitimate move there did not see a corner cut at all as we go on to this long back straight unfortunately that corner cut did cost us lots of time to Hanukkah in front we're half a second behind him and we've got Bastianini looking to our outsiders now we approach this very tricky breaking zone of this right hand as we're looking to Binder as well looking to our outside as we break to the inside but no we've been punted the wee McPhee what has he done to us? We're down. So is Bastianini. Oh, is he is he still upset over Valencia? Us beating him now after that epic battle. We're having words with you after this race, McPhee. As unfortunately we're down to 29th place after battling for a top 10 position. Man, that has cost this race. As it looks like Bastianini is making a nice move around the outside of Tanucci behind us. As we've got Manzi in front, we've got Binder in front as well on the red bike as we go into the left hand corner. And whoa, Binder doing some wheelies, already showing off as we are getting to know Manzi quite well through that left hand. And now into the long, fast left hand. He's got some nice white rims actually to go over his bike, and it's pretty nice. But we're hopefully we're going to get ahead of him into this right hand corner as we're diving down his inside. Looks like we're going to be diving down the inside of Binder as well. Oh, we're taking three riders. We're being cheeky. Too cheeky. Oh, and a front wheel. Touch the back wheel. We always fall down. And we are falling down to last place behind Karudin at the end of this first lap. That is not the first lap we wanted. That's not the first lap we imagined before this race. We were batting for the top ten at the end of the first sector. Now we're just going to be battling to get into the points for the rest of this race. The next five laps will have to be the best five laps we've ever ridden around this circuit to get some points. That is, you know, a devastating first lap for us. But we're already making moves through the field. We're past Karudin and onto this back straight. We've got three riders in front. I believe that's Cardoso right in front of us. We've got Tanucci and we've got Rodrigo as well. He's not lost in his home race. He's doing well. In the early part of this race as we're in the slipstream of the Spanish rider in front we're going to look to her outside at the end of this lap as we've from that first lap we've learned don't go to the inside oh we definitely are going to the outside look at that three riders in one corner oh we will take that move for days great move from us there up into the top 30 of the order now so we've disposed four riders just got another 29 to go before we win this race as we've got Binder about eight tenths a second ahead of us we've got I believe that's Cardoso behind us got a look out for her into that right hand bend it looks like we just about got in the power early enough to fend off her attackers we've got Manzi and Binder battling in front hard for 28th position and we've gained loads of time into that left hand corner on them as going into the final sector of this second lap we are four tenths of a second behind Bind and we've already pulled out two thirds of a second to Cardoso behind us. So we don't have the nut behind us, thankfully, into this final corner. And I think we're going to take the wide line after what happened on that first lap. Take the wide line here and then cut back. Hopefully get on the power early and get a great run through this left-hand king. Because it looks like Kent's leading on every and Navarro, Cortoraro, who did the first lap of the race and then Vinales rounds out the top five as we go into the third out of the race we're past Binder we pass Manzi into the first corner yes we are we pass his lovely white bike and into 28th position so we're making some nice moves in this race hopefully it's entertaining for you lot you know me battling through the field for the second race on the trot as is that Bastianini in front of us is that our first lap Conrad in front of us yes it is it looks like the Italian teenage sensation right in his slipstream down this back straight it's Kenton and Oliveira are battling for the win yes we are right in his slipstream we gained over a second on Manzi behind us we don't have a look behind us heading into this right hander as we're looking down the inside of the Italian oh have we gone about break to ourselves yes we have just a bit you know didn't outbreak ourselves by much but enough for him to cut back down our inside and back into 27th place as Binder and Manzi are battling behind so they're definitely you know, not on our tail they're 1.7 seconds behind us so we can just concentrate on this row of bikes in front I think that's up to like 20th place we can see so hopefully you can maybe follow Bastianini through the field as he's a you know, quick rider 
in this game. So, Manzi and Bindo are still fighting hard. They're exchanging places every corner. As, oh, no, that's a brave dive down the inside of Bastianini. But he's made it stick on Daniello. I believe that's how you say it. And I apologise if I got that wrong. You know, his fellow Italian there, he's dropped back. And now, we're getting to know his bike there. As he's got some nice blue rims on that bike. I'm a very, very much a rim inspector this race as you go into the final couple of corners and whoa we really get to know Danilo in these final corners and we get past him barge past him as Vasquez says the fast out of the race as we go on to the second half of this race now onto the fourth lap and we're up to 27th place oh we're still 12 positions behind you know getting the point this race as it's three wide in front of us you are a madman Bastianini making a move around the outside of Herrera and Guevara that's a bit of a mouthful but it looks like he's made it stick. Beautiful move from the Italian in front of us. And now we're fighting him through into 25th place. Are we making a move on him as well? Yes, we are. Into the right-hand kink. And we've got a couple of riders fighting hard in front in Gardner and Kornfeld. And hopefully we can get in their slipstream as we approach this tight right-hand bend at the end of this very long back straight. Of course, we've got to look out for Bassini as well behind us. But look at that powerful slipstream down this back straight as in looking to the outside of Kornfeld and whoa is that Gardner being very you know very rough there on Kornfeld he's made his way by as Martin and Otel are fighting for 20th place right in front of us as you can see on the screen so you know we can see a couple of riders fighting hard in front so you know we've got to make our way past them very quickly or else we're going to be held up Maybe as we dive down the inside of both of them as, oh, we're losing the bike on the exit. Kind of cheekily, I, said, I believe losing, I think that's Gardner who was alongside us, you know, to keep ourselves outright. But we're up to 22nd place as we defend slightly into that left-hander. Now we can see the pair in front that are battered in. That is Martin, about one and a half seconds in front of us. We've got Kornfeld still right on our tail. So we've got to look out for the Czech Republic rider into this right-hand bend at the end of the lap as Kenton and Riviera. They're... They're exchanging positions every corner, it feels like. And we've got Gardner and Confield battling behind, but he made some nice breaking into that right hand, it looks like, uh, as we get away from the battling pair in front and try and gain on the battling pair in front onto this penultimate lap of the race. 22nd position. Oh, it's going to be tough to score a point, as I can see. 21st, 20th, 19th, 18th, 17th. I see 16th. Can't quite see 15th, though. In front of us as Bastianini's battling with Gardner behind us. Remy Gardner, you know, really put showing his battling qualities this race as we go on to the back straight here. Get a great run for this right hand kink, hopefully, and get in a slipstream of Martin and Otel in front, the German and Spanish riders as we go to the end of this first sector. And oh, we're going in the middle of them? No, we're going to the going to the inside. We're not going for the dramatic move down the middle. Going to the inside. Of, I believe that's Martin in up front of us as we go into 20th place. Have we? As I thought I'll break myself slightly into that corner, but we have made the apex and we're up to 20th place behind Migno, behind Ferrari. We're up with our Mahindra buddies, it seems now, at the end of this race. We're behind Nicky Aijo, the Finnish rider, in front of us, just about half a second in front of us. So Vasquez is down. Oh no, the Spanish veteran. It's down in front of us. Oh, he's going to be further down the third. Is he go he's going to be battling for points, it seems. For the rest of this race, is Kenton and Evia again exchanging positions for the lead. As we've made up loads of time on Ijo through that middle sector. And going round his outside and into 19th place. As we've got Ferrari about a second in front of us. We can see our Mahindra buddies in front. Come on, my come on Ferrari, give us a toe onto this final lap. As it looks like Ijo is looking down at inside into this right hander, but we seem to be breaking well into that corner, thankfully. So the AI are not making moves on us, or the you know other riders making moves on us. As on to the final out of the race, it's Kent Olivier, Cortero, Navarro, and Vinales rounding out the top five. While we are in 19th place, we've gained a couple of tenths of a second on Ferrari in front of us. There's 18th, 17th, and 16th in front of us. So we did a fast out of the race with a 49.2. Very happy with that. We've got great race pace. This race that really did surprise me, but that first lap has really cost us the chance of getting a solid result to back up that pace. We do a nice switchback move on Ferrari up into 18th place. We can see 15th in front of us. So we're down the inside of, I believe that's the VR46 rider. We're alongside who's leaning on us. 
down the back straight. That's a bit cheeky from him. As we've got Livio Loy in front of us. He had a superb Argentine Grand Prix back in 2014. Finished fourth in the race. Well, he's a bit lower down in this race. As we get past him for 16th, probably gone a bit wide. And oh, he's not accepting us. Taking our line there as he bashes our way past us and into 16th place. Well, it's a bit of payback for kind of the moves we've been doing this race as well as we're defending and making a move as well in, in, in the same spot into this corner into 16th as yes we have made it past the way have we oh just about got on the power earlier than him as we've got Ijo uh, not Ijo oh no even and Bagnano fighting for 14th place in front as unfortunately my ghetto messed up there I do apologize for that as we just hold on the 16th place into the right hander but 15th was out of our reach as Kent won the race. We crossed the line in 16th. A disappointing result after a terrible first out. There wasn't much we could do, unfortunately. Kent won by three tenths of a second from Olivier. Then Cortero just beat out Navarro for the final podium spot ahead of Vinales, Masbu, Hanukkah, Vasquez, and Brad Binder. So Vasquez, despite that full finishing in eighth, good. Good recovery from the Spanish rider. There has Antonelli rounded out the top 10 ever. Locatelli, McPhee, Fanati, Ono, and Bagnana. Our Mahindra body grabbing the last point ahead of us by almost four seconds in the end as we finish ahead of Roy and Migno. I believe it was on that VR46 bike. So, you no know, great pace in that race. It really did surprise me, but not the result we wanted, especially after you know, Austin, where we had another poor result. You know, we've got to grab all the points we can at the moment with the bike being a bit underdeveloped, you know, not quite there on pace. And we're just not doing that after a superb round in Qatar's unfortunate Rodrigo finished last in his home round as Danny Kent made it three out of three this race. So he leaves the championship by 19 points ahead of Oliveira who grabs second ahead of Cortero in Navarro. Finales, Hanukkah, Binder up to seventh place. And you saw Mazbu, Vasquez. Bastianini round out the top 10. We're down to 13th position in the stands behind McPhee. Look at that. He punted us on the first half and now he's, you know, he's a position ahead of us in the standings. I'll see your game, McPhee. And Zogateri, Fanati Ono, and Bagnana is the last of the point scorers in 17th place. As here are the non-point scorers at the moment. As now we go on to the constructors standings and I guess Honda are leading after Danny Kennett's won three races. They do, as they have 75 points. 19 ahead of KTM, and Hasvana in third with 31 points. And Mahindra drift at the back in fourth with only 12 points. But hopefully, you know, we can improve after a couple of dreadful rounds, you know, in score points for Mahindra. As now we nick our GP credits on our fans. We earned over 5,000 fans, or over 36,000 fans in total. And we got over 10,000 credits, and now we have over... 73,000 credits in total. Somehow it's worked out well for us on the fans and GP credits front, despite the dreadful result. I don't understand that, but I'm very happy to see that, as we were second best Mahindra. I guess that counted for something in the race. As before we look at what else happened in Argentina, we can choose a team or sponsor or state on our current team. So we're kind of choosing a team that we want to go to, maybe, for a team manager to scout. And if we do well enough in the next few races, can maybe join that team but of course in this series we're looking at sponsors so we're looking to get our manager to get the higher sponsors you know give us more sponsor reward in the races hopefully you make us earn more gp credits and you know get better bikes as we move up as team stanley i didn't know tom was in this how do you get in it in this tom as unfortunately he doesn't give us out too much so i may not i may not choose you unfortunately stanley as We've got Alpine Stars and Oakley being the biggest sponsor awards. As you can see, the bar is full. So we're going to be nicking at Oakley and Alpine Stars for a manager to scout. I'm not really sure what to choose at the moment. As at the moment, as you can see, our x Light sponsor is kind of in the middle of the sponsor payouts. But we can choose any Moto3 team at the moment as well. But we're choosing Oakley as a sponsor for our manager to scout. Has, of course... Marquez won in Argentina ahead of Rossi and if I can just about read the preview it looks like we're about one in Moto2 as of course we saw Danny Kent win head of the every hour in Moto3 so you know, a very interesting Argentine Grand Prix there for all three 
classes as we're about to get you know getting on form now the defending champion in the Moto 2 class and the defending champion in the Moto GB class one as well in Marquez and now we go to the tribe of night uh, somehow we've got gained loads of fans after a round in Argentina I think actually the fastest that maybe helped you know with us gaining fans and that knows GP credits has Divo Loy is disappointed he didn't win our battle well you're not getting us back, Loy, for the rest of the year. We're, we're faster than you, as it demonstrated in that race. Not to be too cocky, of course, but Grassini's sniffing around. Yeah, get out of here, Grassini, as our sponsors are a bit disappointed with that result. Yeah, I am a bit disappointed as well. Actually, they're a bit happy as well. Maybe it's the pace, as I said. You know, doing the fast out of the race, you know, really did help us earn those credits, I believe, and the fans. So, yeah, great pace, that race. But after that first lap, there's not nothing we could really do you know to get a good result round there and it's disappointing that we've fallen back in the championship after a very solid start in Qatar we've got the pace we just got to avoid these incidents you know mess up in qualifying in Austin messing up on that first lap in Argentina we got punted by McPhee but the second one was a bit too you know greedy making you know moves past two riders and then a third one just as we kind of braked too well into that right hander. As in the MotoGP Championship, Marcus leaves the championship from Rossi and Lorenzo just. And Pedro's is already adrift in fourth place. As Honda regained the lead in the constructor stand by a single point from at Yamaha. With Ducati just five points ahead of Suzuki and having half the points of Honda already. So very distinct, no battle lines already in the MotoGP Championship with Honda and Yamaha battling in the top and you see you know the top three riders Marquez, Lorenzo and Rossi battling for the title. In Moto2 we're about to gain the championship lead of this win in Argentina five points ahead of Zarco of those in third and in Volgo drift in fourth place bit of a pattern developing and in the constructor standings it is Calix leading speed up by 19 points. We have Tech 3 and Tuta yet to score and as I said maybe unlikely to score for the rest of the season but if they do score of course I'm, I'm donating to charity because that would be a miracle and a miracle needs to be recognized has into the Moto3 standings yeah we've already seen it you know we've seen Danny Kent winning his third race on the trot you know Danny Kent OP in Moto3 they really do need to you know kind of rebalance things you know that would be good to see for Milestone in the future you know rebalance things after say a month or two to real life as uh, at the moment it's just Danny Kent running away with things hopefully you can change that once we develop the bike you know later in the season has Kent leads Oliviera by 19 points with Cotteraro 23 points back from Kent and then Navarro drift in fourth place it's not a very good spot to be in fourth as it seems like you're already out of the title challenge already by the third round of the season as Honda leads KTM by 19 points and as Varna third and Mahindra in fourth 19 points of drift off has Van, but hopefully as i said we can prove you know from the next round onwards make no mistakes you know getting no crashes or incidents and you know we can get some good results as i said the pace is there at the moment just not getting the results we kind of deserve i feel you know in austin and in argentina as we note to the candle of mystery for the next round of the season oh it's round a popular circuit the circle de Jerez, the three the two point even seven mile circuit in Spain for the Grand Primero B Win de España. The that record is from Lewis Holm in 2013 with 146.9. If I can read that right, but yeah, disappointing round for us again in Argentina. But as I said, if we can just keep it on the black stuff in Spain, hopefully the result will come as a result. You know, another top 10 result to really push us up in the championship. We need to get this season going. Again, has so now for watching, and I will see you next time.